Hello, hello, viewers and artists and all alike to another stream of Art Lounge Alley. This is Figure Drawing Basics, part 55. I am your host, and I am going to jump into today's stream in just a second. But first, I would like to introduce newcomers to the Patreon page. Here it is. This is it. Um, I had a long time coming. Finally got to uh, put it together and um, make it live about, I don't know, I, I'm guessing like three weeks ago, maybe a month. I'm not really sure, actually. I don't remember the exact day, but uh, I'm going to do a quick little overview, uh, starting with two, one official patron, two bucks per month. Uh, show your support for the Art Lounge Alley. You get access to the Discord server where everybody from all the social media platforms come together um, from all the different tiers and you guys have a place to hang out and chat, get to know one another, share ideas, uh, share some comics that you like or movies that you're interested in or music that you're listening to, uh, talk about pretty much anything, uh, including the stream uh, or anything under the sun. Uh, that is the point of that discord server for you guys to be able to interact with one another and have a, a cool safe space to come to and um, share stuff um, you will also have your patron name listed in the credits that's right and once you guys start pledging i am uh, i'm gonna start doing credits at the end of the stream where i'm gonna list your name as a thank you for keeping the stream going next we got tier two all access patrons five bucks per month this is where you guys get access to all my content. So things like finished pages, exclusive content, um, work in progress, speed painting videos, um, just a bunch of things that I'm going to be posting in the future as well. Um, as well as some um, drawings that are going to be there to help you understand anatomy better. And I'm going to go over that real quick today as well. Um, but yeah, it's going to be that that gives you an opportunity to see all the work on there. And of course, you get all the previous tier benefits as well. <clears throat> now, exclusive content, what does that mean? Uh, it means things that are not going to be posted on any other social media platform aside from Patreon. So you guys get early access to finished pages, which eventually those pages will be on um, the other social media platforms. But... I'm going to be posting things that are only going to be exclusive to patrons. Next, we got tier three critique submissions here. Now, this is where it gets interesting. 15 bucks per month. Um, you get a chance to submit your work and have it critiqued live on stream. I'm going to show you where you can improve if you're having some trouble with anatomy or some perspective issues. Um, I'm going to give you some pointers. I'm going to help you figure it out. I'm going to do a live demonstration. It's going to be uh, a layer over you're drawing. Um, there are a couple of requirements there. I suggest you guys read through them. Uh, take your time, read them at your own pace. Uh, the page, the Patreon, pa Patreon page is available in the about section of, um, of the Twitch channel, along with other social media platforms on there. Um, so yeah, you could you get access to this page. You could take your time, read through them. And if you got any questions, feel free to ask. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Next, we got Kickstarter patrons. 25 bucks per month for being a Kickstarter patron. For pledging 25 bucks per month, you get a high resolution digital painting done of you, which uh, I will send you and you could uh, do with it as you will. Send it to a loved one. Make it your social media profile photo. Uh, to make it interesting, to make it fun for everybody, including yourself, I encourage you guys to um, show your creativity. You know, get creative with it. Wear masks, put on makeup, glasses, expressive, uh, make expressive face expressions, hats and accessories, costumes. Uh, all highly encouraged, but not required. You can send me a photo from your head down to your chest, uh, along with your favorite color, if you got one. And I will start doing a high resolution digital painting of you on stream every Thursday from eight until 10. The critique uh, stream is gonna be on Fridays from eight until 10. 
Next, we got tier four artist promotion. Now this, uh, this is more geared towards intermediate and advanced artists who have a body of work, who want to exhibit, who want to uh, gain following and um, get exposure, you know, be part of a art community. Um, and it's not limited to illustrators. It's open to all sorts. So if you guys know anybody who isn't an illustrator and would like to get that promotion, would like to be part of the Art Lounge Alley community, uh, let them know. Send them a link. Talk to them about this uh, this channel. Um, you will get five minute airtime. It does require you to send in a five minute video. I just think it's a better way for you guys to promote yourselves. You know, to do it at your own pace, to do it at the how you want it to be shown to the public, how you want it to be talked about to the public. Um, I will uh, talk about it after the video. Now I will introduce you guys before the video. I will introduce you guys through the social media platform prior to the stream. And that way you guys get exposure from all different social media platforms through the Art Lounge Alley as well. Um, <clears throat> now for this one, there are some requirements on here. There's some tips, there's some ideas for each uh, of the artists. And remember, it's not limited to the ones written. It is open to any artist who has a body of work um, that would like to promote their stuff. Um, but feel free to read through it. And once again, um, send me any questions you got. Next, we got tier five, private tutoring. Pretty self-explanatory, limited to 15 people. You get 30 videos, uh, 30 minute videos per week. Uh, one video per week, four videos per month, um, and a PSD file um, along with that video. So that way you could explore the file at your own pace, um, see where you could uh, correct your own work, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to assign you guys homework just so that you have something to shoot for. You have goals set for the week uh, to, to practice, to get better, to uh, motivate yourselves to keep drawing. Um, and you will also get a private Discord channel dedicated just for you. So each of the 15 members are going to have a private Discord channel um, so that we can have a one-on-one -on -one there. You can send me messages, you can send me comments, you could ask me questions, um, you could leave your progress, you know, you're, a you're able to put in um, images in there, and it's going to be between me and you. That way it's not open to the public, and uh, you get that privacy. Um, and of course you get all the previous tier benefits as well. So that pretty much does it y'all take your time, read through the page at your own pace, and I will be jumping into today's stream. Now today's stream, I am going to be doing a little overview of, uh, stuff that I, we covered in the first chapter or the first half of the Art Lounge Alley. And a lot of it is because I'm kind of, it's not a new pay, it's not a new sketchbook. You know, this is a sketchbook that I used before. Uh, I just, I was really, I was looking through it and I was kind of disappointed on how many pages I left blank and how I didn't really take advantage of all the space on there. Um, just to show you guys what I mean, for those of you who are just tuning in, I made sure to pretty much cover every single page in this sketchbook. Now this is great paper. I really enjoyed it. It's thick. It's thick enough to be able to uh, do watercolor, you know, um, uh, and try other mediums and not have to worry about it seeping through. Um, and it's also smooth. It's not too smooth where it's like slick almost where like the lead slides on the paper, it actually has a nice texture to it as well. It's a Canson. If you guys go to an art store, which I highly encourage you guys to support your local art store, uh, check out this sketchbook. It's really good quality. Um, but I suggest you guys bring a pencil with you that you like to use uh, and just kind of play around with the paper at the store. Like I'm pretty sure a lot of them have like sample sketchbooks so that way you, c you can kind of see what it's like, or maybe ask somebody there if you could just like uh, sample the paper on there to see if, uh, if the texture is good or if you like the texture on it and see what they say. I think most of them would, would be fine with it or they would have like 
some sample there for you to test out. But it is an important thing. You know, this is something that I kind of, uh, I missed out with, with this. You know, I didn't really think about it and I got this. And while the texture is okay, it's pretty thin. So I don't see, I don't see myself using this for um, even India ink because I think the other side, it's gonna seep through the, through the other side. And I think that's one of the reasons why I left a lot of pages blank because as I flipped through it, I noticed that I could see, oh, excuse me. I could see um, through the page to the other side. Uh, and that's, that's not good. Um, I don't, I don't really enjoy that kind of distract from focusing on whatever it is that I'm doing. And I'm just like, oh no, what if I puncture through, um, what's already been worked on anyway. Um, but today what I would like to do is, as I mentioned, I'm trying to find a good page here. So wasteful. <laughs> um, some of these pages are. Yeah, I could see why. I could see why I skipped through. Because it really does. And it's pencil, you know, that's why I find it kind of ridiculous is that it's it's not even inks that I'm using that kind of seep through it. It's just uh, pencil work. All right, I'm gonna just do it on this one. Um, I'm going to draw what I was talking about before. Um, I think it's important to have it in every sketchbook that you have, just as like a, a reference. Um, that way you could turn to it, you know, when you're drawing something else or when you're kind of like thinking about it or you're checking your anatomy or your proportion. Uh, you could turn to this page and you could be like, okay, it is this measurement and this is how it's supposed to look, et cetera, et cetera. So I am going to be doing a, um, a proportion image. Side by side. Just to show you guys um, what I'm talking about. And this page is also available on Patreon. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But first, I wanna, I wanna sketch this out real quick. fit in this notice how I already I created a parameter for myself I created okay like this is how big I want it to be with these lines right here I don't want it to be any bigger I don't want to guess you know I don't want it to be just like well you know I drew it this way this is how big it's gonna be I want it to I, I have an idea of how big I want it to be and I'm gonna fit it within these parameters so uh, it's important to start out that way especially if you're doing uh, let's say if you're doing a comic book panel, right? And you got a certain amount of space dedicated in a panel for that specific panel and you need to fit your drawing within it. So think of it this way. These lines are kind of like your panel uh, panel lines, your frame in a comic book page. And you have to fit it within that panel. So kind of doing it. Um, 
large scale, of course, as you can see. Now the challenge here is you kind of have to sketch out the entire figure or the entire por uh, section, whatever it is that you're uh, trying to fit within a, within the f a panel, within the parameters. Uh, you kind of have to do that. You can't go based off of the head because let's say you create these parameters, right? And then you draw out the head and it's pretty big. Well, it's not going to fit the, everything else that you want it to be in. In this case, I want it to go down to the groin area. So, um, you know, you're, you're going to use the head as the unit of measurement, but it has to be big or small, depending on how you want, look at it, enough to fit within within these parameters. So um, sketch out everything, you know, what you want to fit in there. As you guys saw, I did a light one uh, just to see, well, how big is everything supposed to be? You know, okay, I got I got the head in, I got the torso in, and I got the uh, hips in as well. And then from there, you could adjust. You can make the head bigger, or you can make it smaller. That's the whole idea of sketching lightly. Now, I'm I'm doing it a little bit harder so that you guys can see it. You know, if I'm doing it too light, it, it won't show uh, on the stream, on the camera, or whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's. It's a light process, it's important to do that. Notice how I am keeping uh, distance from the tip of the pencil, because for me personally, um, and you might want to monitor that with yourself as well, and what I did notice with a lot of beginners as well, is when they hold it too close to the tip, they tend to start going into details, they press too hard because they want to, they feel like they have more control over the lines when they press harder on the pencil and on the paper, you know, the pencil isn't sliding away from them um, you know it's just that it's I guess it's that mechanic right when you want to hold on to something and you want to have more control over it you, you p squeeze it harder to make sure it doesn't fall out of your hands it's it's this weird I guess uh, fear of losing control over something right so I think a lot of beginners tend to do that with the pencil because they want more control over their lines uh, they want to make sure that if they're going to make a straight line it's going to be straight and the way they do that is by pressing hard on the pencil by holding it closer to the tip uh you don't want to do that you don't want to teach yourself that you got to get comfortable with quick loose lines um and the other benefit of holding it at a distance as you could see is you could see the entire drawing if you're holding it like this your fingers are kind of obstructing your vision of the entire image. You know, you can't really quite see it until you pull away and you look at it, you know. Uh, whereas this way, it gives you more range of motion. You're still able to see the entire image. Um, and it's more of a free-flowing kind of uh, experience. So yeah, just going back to what I was saying, um, you know, you do a quick light sketch, so that way, after you fit everything in the frame, in the parameters, you can adjust it by like making the torso bigger, making the head bigger, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all right, so once we're at this point right now, we could start measuring things. And the way, uh, well, the rule is that for the top half of the body, right? It's four heads. So from here all the way down to the groin area, you should measure out four heads. So we're going to do that one head, right? Then from the chin down to where the chest is, that's two. And as you could see, that uh, middle line, the guideline really does play an important role. Then from the chest down to the waist, that's three. And then from the waist down to the groin area, that's four. So it's a little bit longer actually than I want it to be, unless I just, yeah, I measured it a little too high. So from the chin down to there, that's one. I'm gonna just make sure that my head measurement is right. 
then from there down to the waist that's two it's still big still comes around here all right so that's where we make the adjustment so this right here marks four heads It's not that huge of a difference. I'm going to draw the bottom line again. Just so you guys can see how the same rule applies for the second half of the body. Now I'm going to draw the line right across where the chest is. And that's going to uh, pay itself forward for the second half as well. Um, next, the next rule is the width of the arm, right? How do you know how wide the arm is supposed to be? Now remember, this is just the standard. This. The width of the arm varies, right? If somebody's really muscular, that sort of thing. Um, but this is just the standard. This is like your average, let's just say, right? And then from that average, you can build it out to be whatever you want. You can make it incredibly muscular, or very skinny. But this is your middle ground, right? This is where, excuse me, this is where you start off. You know, this is where you gauge uh, where you want to go with it. Do you want to make it more muscular? Do you want to make it more thin? Uh, you got to start somewhere. So this this is what you're basically learning here. And this is what I'm teaching uh, is that that basic starting ground. So uh, the rule is the width of the arm is half a head. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to take the ruler. I'm going to measure half a head. At the widest point of the head. And okay, I see that it has to be wider. So I'm going to make that adjustment. Same thing here. So you could see how uh, of much of an important role um, the head plays in constructing the entire human body, pretty much. Also, notice that where the elbows start, right about here, it's past like the waist area. It's a little bit closer towards the hips. That's where they start. And then I'm going to draw the rest of the arm and notice how the wrists are past the groin area so this line right here you could see how the wrists um, end past the groin area and that's an important detail because uh, you don't want to give the figure t-rex arms and that's gonna look off and I've noticed this a lot, actually, and I noticed that even with, like, advanced artists, people, or intermediate artists, I'll say, uh, where they would get everything else right. You know, there's, like, muscles on there and perspective or, like, backgrounds and stuff. And there's all this detail, but uh, the arms are too short. You know, something like that could ruin an entire image. It could break the illusion that... Uh, we, be, we become um, spellbound. You know, when you look at an image, when you're looking at a comic scene, they're line, it lines, right? But uh, because they're well done, it, it kind of puts you in 
in there with the characters, with what they're what they're experiencing, as if though you actually are the viewer. You know, this is your eye looking at what's going on with all these things. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's well constructed. You know, that it makes it believable with the use of anatomy, with the use of perspective, um, with the use of emotion and uh, body language and all that stuff. It really, it, it really captivates you. So the last thing you want to do is just break that by... Um, you know, avoiding by making these like mistakes, by making the arms too short. Um, th that's one of them. And as I'll go through, I'll talk about other ways as well. But yeah, as you guys could see, uh, pretty much everything has been constructed uh, using the cylinder shape. I forgot to mention that even the body, right? Like the torso cylinder shape, it's just a massive, well, it's just simplify it and make it more or, or less intimidating rather uh just a giant cup you know it's just a giant cup so draw giant cups and that's already your uh, your go-to when you're sketching out the torso you know when you're just trying to establish how big you want things to be on the paper um and that's pretty much how i constructed everything everything is a cylinder shape so it's less intimidating to create it it's quicker you know i'm not dancing around on paper hoping eventually whatever lines i put down are going to look like a body um, i'm actually going straight to these basic shapes and going straight to uh, the cylinder shape to help build the figure all right so moving on we got the first half now let's do the second half and uh again cylinder shapes and again I'm just going to sketch it out. I'm not going to take too much time. Just want to make sure things fit as I expect them to fit. So I'm kind of like using these like right triangles in this perspective to draw or like triangles to draw the feet as a placeholder. All of this is just placeholders like the cylinder shape. They're placeholders until you um you're satisfied with the position with the size um with the angle especially so you, you notice how things are pretty much on a straight line it's not tilted you know the entire drawing isn't tilted to the side or leaning more towards the left or the right and that's important you know in this position especially when you're draw drawing things straight on and you want them to be straight on you know um yeah, you want to make sure you pay attention to the angle of your lines so that at the end, it's not just tilted more. Um, and that breaks also the uh, the fourth dimension. <clears throat> it breaks the fourth dimension. If you, if you draw the figure in a position where it says it's straight on, it's standing uh, upright, there is nothing affecting their motion, there is nothing, you know, tilting them or whatever it is, um, if you draw it in that style, but you have it leaning more towards the left or the right, just even slightly, it, it breaks the fourth wall. Um, and it just kind of puts the viewer off because it's like, oh, they didn't notice this one major flaw. And that's also another thing that intermediate artists have done as well, like muscles and coloring and detail and background and all this stuff. But the entire figure is leaning to the left when it, it clearly is meant not to. You know, you could just tell by the pose itself, by the action of the body, that it isn't intended to uh, be leaning in that direction. And what that does is it throws it off balance. Like, if you were to actually stand in that position yourself, you wouldn't be able to stand. You would probably tilt over. That angle w suggests that. So... It's the it's like the contradiction basically in the work is that the pose suggests that the person is balanced and they're able to hold their balance in that position, but the angle and how it's drawn suggests otherwise. And uh, you know, practically, if you were to try it yourself, you would realize that as well that 
you're you're gonna fall you know no matter how much you're trying uh, standing on one leg and your entire body leaning all the way to the left uh, you're gonna fall um, now in some cases it might make sense like if you're talking about speed right if like for instance when people draw the flash and there's this like really exaggerated pose of of him like running through whatever and his body is like really leaning towards the left but that is again that's in combination of the pose itself suggesting that he's running it's not saying the opposite it's not saying that he's standing still but he's leaning to the left speeding through you know again that would be contradictory as well um so you could exaggerate the pose if it's meant to be uh going in the direction that it's going so if he's falling you could exaggerate the body language to show that he's falling if he's running or she's running uh, you could exaggerate the pose to show that it's a lot of speed that they're picking up but if it's something like this and it's leaning it doesn't make sense right it's like it's toppling over you're meant to draw it straight on anyways um yeah so now that we got the parameters down right um this basically and it's a lot easier now to explain because we've established that from here to here it's four heads right we said that from here that's one that's two that's three that's four uh whoops it's two heads sorry we established that this is two heads the top part and then from here to here it's two heads so four heads all together for the top part and the same idea is here so that's why I drew that line down the middle because it's the same concept from here to here it's two heads and then from here to here it's two heads So four heads in total. Um, yeah, and that's why I drew that line for the chest. As you could see, it really divides it up to where the knees are for both. For both legs, obviously, to keep it balanced. And now it's just a matter of defining the legs more. So I drew the cylinder shape, but... Uh, the, the leg isn't just a cylinder shape, it actually has muscles on it, so I kind of wanted to draw the calves on there to give it more of, uh, of a human figure look. thick there um, but yeah once again it really helps to have those cylinder shapes there and then you could uh, play around with it after you know I'm, I'm drawing again I'm drawing them kind of uh, dark on here but that's just to um, just to show you guys so you guys have more visibility here So this is just a quick overview, and again, I wanted to draw this in the sketchbook uh, just for consistency's sake. It's always great to practice. You know, I always like to bring up the example of when you were learning. Uh, let's say you were learning to read, you had to uh, you had to recite the alphabet plenty of times uh, before you were able to actually get it and uh, just read properly. Right? It wasn't just like one time 
that you recite it and then you're like, all right, I got all of it. I know all the words, I know all the letters and I'm excellent at reading. Now you have to do it a lot of times. So for the sake of consistency, draw this often in your sketchbook. If you're starting out, especially uh, draw it over and over again, have, make it your uh, routine uh, warm up. let's just say. And that way it ingrains in your head that the top part of the head is two, ha uh, two, two, top part of the body is two heads, bottom part of the body is two heads, four heads for the top part of the body, four heads for the bottom part of the body. And eventually it's just going to be ingrained in your head. And you'll always remember that when you're sketching and drawing, uh, you know, that, uh, th that becomes your go-to. You won't wonder. Kuriyami, Kuriyami, twenty-two asked, "Blue, blue mechanical pencil." Uh, yeah, it's it's actually uh, a photo, uh, photo proof blue pencil. Uh, it's it's like an old school technique of what they used to do uh, back in the day where they would draw all this out right and then they would use the pencil and they go over the lines and when they would scan this the blue pencil wouldn't show up it would just be the the um, regular uh, lead pencil that would be that would be shown so uh it, it was just really useful for that and i just like it you know i like the having that underneath and then having to use the um, regular pencil over it because it makes it easier to distinguish lines. You know, if I did it all in blue pencil, which I could at this point, but uh, I still like that um, that process. You know, starting out with the blue pencil as your sketch and then using the black pencil to really put in the detail, the definition, that sort of thing. Um, it's, it's useful beyond just um, scanning things and I don't even scan it or I just kind of take pi pictures of things um, Kuriyami 22 asks is it easy uh, is it easily erasable uh, yeah you know I use this um, and it does a pretty good job and it also really depends on the type of paper that you're using um, for instance this paper it is uh, slightly textured so uh going on top of it um it, it doesn't it doesn't like ingrain itself into the paper like if you were to use like more of a smoother uh, or like a silkier paper which i don't like uh the lead kind of like um uh, skids on it and you kind of have to press harder in order for the lead to stay on the paper for that kind of paper at least that's what i found you know for some really smooth slick paper uh, I tend to press more in order to get uh, more lead on the paper. Whereas with this, you don't really have to do that. And because you don't press harder, it's easier to erase. Um, it's it's not like, for instance, if you were to use an HB4 or HB5 or anything above that, it becomes a lot harder to um, to erase. You know, that lead is, it's, it's f more firm and... Um, what a lot of people use it for is just for either shading, you know, because they're, um, let's say they're, they want more of a lighter shading. They just go to the H4 and they could create that without having to press harder or lighter. It just automatically is pretty light. Um, but yeah, that kind of pencil would be more difficult. Whereas this is kind of closer to like HB. The blue light is a little bit closer to HB. Um, yeah, and I just really, I also like how it looks. I think it looks cool and it just prepares me for the each process. Um, so yeah, anyways, this, um, this is, this is pretty much it. I'm going to try to, I'm going to go over it with pencil as well to define it more and just talk about how I was talking about that process. Yeah, no problem. Great. I mean, good questions. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to go over with the regular pencil. 
And here I could just play around with stuff. You know, I could add little details. Um, I'm not gonna do too much of that because I do want to keep it simple for you guys on here uh, for the sake of just showing, you know, this is the figure. These are the measurements for it. And also notice how the fingers are past the groin area. That's important. Um, that's something to really look out for is that detail. If you have it like just under just under like, let's say this is where the tip of the fingers would be, where the wrists are, it, it, it would look off because then you would have to draw the wrist and the wrist would be up here. And that's just gonna throw off the entire image kind of. And a blue pencil is like your warm up too, you know, you're just warming up. Um, you're getting things down and by the time you're finished sketching out the whole thing, your, your, um, your warm up has you ready for the next st stage. You know, it's like exercising. When you go to the gym, you don't want to go immediately straight to like the most heaviest, complicated things doing 20 reps. You want to start out with something light, get the muscles war um, flexible. So it's kind of the same idea, you know, when you're warming up, uh, in drawing there's a warm-up period where your muscles relax a little bit, where you get into the flow, you start to remind yourself like, oh, this is what the process is like, you know, this is what I like to do when it comes to drawing lines. Um, and then you're ready to like jump into like more, um, complicated stuff you know your hand is more relaxed you're in the flow just kind of adding little details here for fun creating shadows using these lines So for some of you who jump into drawing and you're just like, oh, I don't feel it today. I think it's just you haven't warmed up. You know, you have to give yourself some time and then eventually you'll notice how you're kind of in a zone. You know, you're drawing and things are flowing. Um, and sometimes that takes a while. Sometimes one day you might sit down and you, you'll draw for like 10 minutes and you'll get into the zone. You'll get into the flow of, of what you're doing. Uh, another day it might take you more, it might take you 20 minutes, um, sometimes half an hour, you know, it really, uh, it really depends from day to day. And the more and more you do it, uh, that time starts to shrink. But don't worry about it, don't focus on that so much, just, uh, just focus on drawing, you know, just focus on um, the process and enjoying the the pencil, how it feels on the paper and the subject that you're drawing, you know, I think that really is what really, um, what really makes me like drawing, you know, when I sit down and I start drawing everything else kind of melts away. Like, I don't really think about anything else. It's just me, the pencil, the paper, and the subject. And, uh, and just manifesting all that stuff on paper. It's fun. And that's all that matters. You know, that's kind of the beauty of it. And that's one of the reasons why I also like drawing from comics. Because sometimes I don't want to sit down and come up with, um, this, that, or the other. You know, I just kind of want to sit down and draw. And it's cool to just pick a comic book that you like and and sit and draw from it. Because you're, not only are you practicing to get better, you're also learning the process of how to draw comics. You know, you're drawing out the panels, you're drawing out the faces, you're drawing out the poses, angles, all that stuff. 
and the more and more you do it the better you become at it and more it becomes ingrained in your head you know at some point it's going to just pop out because you've been doing it uh and it just takes away the burden of having to uh yeah cr think there of like okay well what what am i going to draw on this page what what's going to be the expression what's going to be so on and so forth it's nice to just sit down and get into the zone of drawing and that really helps you know it really doing that whole process copying from the comics um really gets that gets that going so I highly encourage you guys, if you're new, even you know, if you're intermediate or advanced, you know, why not sit down and draw your favorite comic book, um, pick some pages from there. Um, just get into that state of mind, lose yourself in, in drawing. It's the best place to get lost in. It's rewarding. Um, you gain skills. And at the end, you're just like, oh, cool, I just created this panel. And I brought it to life. Pranks and curvature here. Look at that, time is running. Time is running. true was that mr rogers did they take mr rogers and put it into the mix because if it is he, he said some really brilliant stuff there we are absolutely obsessed with numbers it is insane how obsessed people are with numbers they're willing to kill people for numbers like money profits all numbers and they're willing to murder people for it. That's unhealthy. That's crazy. And there has been no pushback against it. People are just like, well, I'm just gonna go along with it. And that's why it's just getting more and more crazy because nobody's telling them like, hey, snap out of it, psycho. Absolutely right, if that was Mr. Rogers. And even if it wasn't, whoever it was. Hit the nail on the head there. Anyways, just playing around with it, like I was, I was telling you guys, um, why not? You know, just mess around with stuff. If it feels like it's fun, Play around with it. That's what sketchbooks are for. Kind of doing like cross hatching here. Um, kind of looks like stockings now. <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> not intentional. Um, well, that pretty much does it, y'all. This was um just a quick review, and give you guys some pointers, some ideas share my thoughts um on how you guys can improve what are some helpful things uh, i wanted to draw this in the sketchbook since i am going to be doing some things in it and also just to remind you guys that it, um you should do that draw it in, in your new sketchbook if you're starting a fresh one 
uh, and practice it in your old sketchbook several times. You know, once once is good. You could always refer to it, uh, but just do it over and over again so you get more understanding of these proportions. Uh, your eye could get used to seeing things in proportion and uh, remembering these measurements and stuff. So uh, just like the alphabet, repeating it m m multiple times helps you remember it better. And uh, soon enough, you won't have to recite it every time you read, right? You don't go through the alphabet. Uh, when you sit down to read something, you just read. So the same thing is going to happen here. You do it enough times and you just won't even have to think about it anymore. Your brain is just automatically going to draw the figure based on that, these principles. If it saw it enough times, you drew it enough times, it's going to it's gonna come out uh, more naturally. Um, so that pretty much does it, y'all, for today's Drawing Basic stream. I will be back tomorrow, same time and place, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, for more Drawing Basics. But uh, stick around, I'll be back in five minutes for the project stream. It's my, um, it's my digital art process. This is, I'm going to be using Clip Studio Paint to do some work from Imagination. It's a project that I started a week ago, maybe a week or a week and a half ago now. Not sure. It's an early process stage, um, and I'll be talking about more um, drawing tips and ideas there as well. Um, so, yep, I'll be back in five minutes. If you guys enjoy the content, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. They both help the stream go a long way. Uh, and I'll see you guys shortly.